announced it. Just that announced it. <laughs> we know our audio is on. Yeah. So, calling to mind our baptism, let us begin as we were marked in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Let's pray together. <clears throat> Let's pray together our open prayer. We give we you the thanks, Lord God, God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit, you give us the word, cleanse us from sin, and produce us to the end of our life. Step up in us the gift of your Holy Spirit, so that we may take your creative and redeem the word to all of the world. Amen. So last week we talked about baptism, the scriptural, the background of it. We looked at the rite itself, the prayers and things, and we saw that we're washed in the waters of baptism, cleansed of sin, sealed with the Holy Spirit signed or marked with the cross of Christ, and then we're welcomed into the body of Christ, and at the same time, we are sent into mission. Did you have a No. Okay. Um, and we're being called to daily die and rise into new life. Martin Luther said, the old person with all sins and evil desires is to be drowned and die daily. And on the other hand, daily, a new person is to come forth and rise up. So in this statement, he's recognizing that we're both saints and sinners. We want to do the right thing, but we always fail to do. Even in the presentation prayer, it says, you know, we are born into sinful humanity or children of fallen humanity. And then by water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God. So this is just an acknowledgement that, you know, we want to do what's right and we fail. But I really like it because it's like every day you have a clean slate. Yes. You just throw it all over again. You know, you're like, okay, I blew it yesterday. God right. helped me today. <laughs> and um, and we can be assured grace overcomes sin, so we're not defined by it. And the Holy Spirit strengthens us to move daily from death to life and do what we can. So knowing what we talked about last week and our and having been either last week at the 10 30 service hopefully um or this week at 8 30 for the baptisms and recognition of baptism what did you notice did anything stand out for you was anything different in your experience of the baptisms besides the fact that the kid was so adorable yeah. <laughs> I, I never saw recognition before i never did either yeah. I, that was I didn't know that was a that thing was, that was interesting to know that you could have that right. yes yes I, I, what was that the recognition i never oh, yeah. 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 I never explained to us right. which was good that as lutherans we believe just in one baptism mm -hmm. So right. he's not, this child is not going to be rebaptized. Right. Yeah. Right. A promise is a promise. Exactly. Yeah. And that's and important to know. know. And yeah. because the Lutherans and mainstream Protestants believe in that fully. Yes. That, because it's God doing mm -hmm. that right. God is giving us grace. It's a pure gift. It's nothing to do with us. Yeah. There are other churches who believe in believers' baptism. So you need to be old enough to say, This mm -hmm. is what I want. But in our church and other mainstream Protestant churches, that is, and and the Roman Catholic Church, um, infant baptism is performed because we feel it's a pure gift from God to help us to yes. live the way God would like us to live. And so, if there's, if somebody has been baptized, because sometimes an infant has been baptized because they're afraid they might die, or somebody's at the point of death, but then they recover. So um or you know for whatever reasons a child is baptized and it's not done within the assembly so you do this recognition of baptism so that it's a way of publicly bringing them into the current congregation where they are some some places you might do just the affirmation especially with an adult but with um you know, <laughs> Hunter, right? Um, yes. Hunter, we uh, they realized that um, that he had been baptized, but his even some of his own family hadn't been present at that, right. and so they wanted to recognize. Right, but the, he was also sealed again. Yes. 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 So, yeah. that, so, was, so that, that you can still do. You yeah. can reseal yeah. Yeah. because yeah. often at confirmation we're sealed again with the Holy Spirit yeah, I was and marked yeah. with the cross of Christ. So you can do that because when. Um, 
for prayers of the dying or prayers who are sick, people who are sick, we're often sealed with oil because it's a sign of strength and it's a, it's an outward um, visible sign and uh, of God's presence with us. I feel uh, struck more than ever because of yeah. last week of Science my role in baptism. So I took much more seriously, seriously. that okay. section, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. which is yeah. because yeah. sadly but beautifully, I was able to baptize one of my nephews as he was dying. Mm -hmm. Infant, mm -hmm. infant. And uh, this was at Children's Hospital, Philadelphia. And they were so gracious. Just what a beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful place. And my brother and sister-in-law were too traumatized. Mm -hmm. Not to say that I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he was baptized with water and my tears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But my sister, older sister, who is a nurse, has in her career did that a few times. Yeah. Yeah, and so many nurses would attest to that's that. That's very significant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's mm -hmm. very meaningful. Oh. Yeah. Well, I, I did not have any of the verbiage, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I just, right. you know, just in the name of the Father and Son, Holy Spirit. That's, that's, all, that's, that's all that's required. Mm -hmm. Yeah, water yeah. and the, the words. Yeah, yeah that's and God's grace. I wasn't there last week. The you right. the doctor had been baptized. Yes. Right. But some people were not. At the service, and would like to wanted to have him recognized. Right. Um. Apparently, his father didn't even know that he was baptized. Oh dear. And so, when so, uh, and I don't know the the whole story, but um, so I and and I've heard of this before. Grandparents sneak in and they baptize somebody, yeah. and things well, like that. Or... It said that he was baptized at a Methodist church in Maryland. Right. Okay. So but the father had not been baptized. About, yeah, so the father, father had, had so last week we had an infant who was baptized, Jack. This week we had Paul, the father who was baptized as an adult. And then um, Hunter, 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 his yeah. son, um, was recognized. His baptism was recognized because, for whatever reason, it was not the whole family response. There was a little acrimony. Yeah, yeah, so, but that, that's not my question as much as it is the recognition it involves. Does not involve the water, but it involves the healing. The healing. The healing. The healing. Right. Yes. right. They um so it's so not a rebaptism. Okay. It is right. not a rebaptism. Well, so the only part that they do do is um the um public recognition of a baptism. Right. They acknowledge right out front that so and so was baptized on such and such a date. Right. We heard that this morning. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then um was uh, then is it Hunter um Answer for himself that he, he did, yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. through with the covenant yeah, of baptism, right? Yeah, and right then right. They, you have the profession of faith, and Thanksgiving at the font, and then, uh, and we just and at the font, he was not rebaptized, right? But he was that we thank you by your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word. Hunter has been washed in the waters of baptism and has been given new life, and to you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. I, I don't know. It's that I I didn't get to see the right. bulletin. But so, um, yeah. but but so we acknowledge he already was. But then they do go and um, the baptized child can, even though he was already baptized, could receive a new garment to signify that. Um, because that's again, it's that's not the sacrament. The water pouring mm -hmm. of the water mm -hmm. in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the actual sacrament. Mm -hmm. So that we would not do again. Okay, but the other thing that was interesting to me is the fact that um, <clears throat> Levi, who's what eight years old or something, right. he was one of the, the sponsors. sponsors. Yeah. Okay, and I didn't. I always thought that had to be an adult. We're like, what do I know? Because I guess traditionally it sort of is. Yeah. yeah. But there he was, this child. But but it, and and I think there has to be at least one adult. Right. It is not as mom was the other sponsor. Mm -hmm. So um I think that was given so generally it is two adults because mm -hmm. look at what the sponsors are yes, right. right. supporting yeah. 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 right. the parents or these new candidates in their growth and faith and things like I that. I thought it was like, such a bonding like, moment. Yeah. It was yeah, yeah. It, I thought it was great. It was yeah. really a great experience yeah. for those of us who were who were there. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it certainly negates yeah. 
born again Christian if he tells us we have to be rebaptized. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. to, which right. <laughs> and and that's the truth. The our our teachings in the Lutheran Church and the Christian Protestant churches and the Roman Catholic Church is baptism happens once because it's not us doing it. It's not just God doing it. And God's word is true. And uh, what God says happens. It's mm -hmm. Um, Sally was the ribbon cutter of the playground. Now I'll take other orders if you want. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So anything else that you think? So, so that was, I mean, I just thought that was, I hadn't realized, you know, who was being baptized and how I was people talking to Pastor Keith this weekend. And I just thought, oh, this is beautiful. The infant, the adult, and then a the kitchen, mm -hmm. right? You know, yeah. we've really seen the whole gamut, and it's so mm -hmm. important because it underlines our theology of baptism. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I just want to, uh, of course, I don't, haven't been following you, but I wanted to mention that that uh, confirmation is a confirm the as reconfirming, re reconfirming with it, and so that it's. It's a contribution. Confirmation means uh, that the, the, the student is actually from any age, I guess, whenever they're confirmed, uh, it means that they, they confirm what they learned, already learned and made it their own. Right, right. So at Confirmation, we usually have, and we'll be looking at this later, what we call the affirmation of the baptism. Right. And what they affirm is that they will want to continue in the covenant that was made for them by mm -hmm. adults mm -hmm. at their baptism. Mm -hmm. And so they, we are affirming as adults both that confirmation, but then at other times in our life, um, we can have, there may be an affirmation of faith when you know, maybe somebody's been away from the church and is coming back mm -hmm. in, or maybe you're coming into a new um, community. When in the confirmation class, we had a student who was baptized yes. and then confirmed it on the same day. I know. So yeah. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. She was one of mine. I love her for saying that. And so courageous. That, that takes courage for a teenager. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that? Were you guys mm -hmm. there at the time? Yeah. Yes. It, it's very mm -hmm. moving. So, mm -hmm. and I have to say, until I show up confirmation, I never thought about my confirmation being a reconfirming of my baptism. Right. I'm such a late learner. I didn't, one of these I didn't things. know that and, you know, until relatively recently. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think it was explained the way it is here. Mm -hmm. And I think it's good that we do explain it. So then it's not just an act, you know, that you follow them when you grow up in the church. Right. Like understanding <clears throat> yeah, what was being said for you uh, as a child. Right. And then, you know, you get older. So it's a progression. Other people do have done it, and now you yourself have, have affirmed mm -hmm. that it is yours. Yeah. When I was confirmed, uh, I was Episcopal. Uh, we had to go to a class to learn what confirmation mm -hmm. right. was about. So well, at least we, I mean, I don't know if they do that in the Lutheran. Yeah. 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 What what was right. said for you, yeah. and then you're you're accepting what was said. Right. 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 And that's what's being taught right. now in the, mm -hmm. in the church mm -hmm. um i mean i was confirmed in eighth grade i mean i was mm -hmm. baptized as an infant i was confirmed in eighth grade we had you know i went to sunday school and weekday church school you know my whole life and then had confirmation but as an adult you start you really like oh you get i mean you can understand things at a different level yeah. Yeah. As an eighth grader. And, well, you know i mean we just keep on growing and that's why it's so important to continue to look back at oh you know baptism happened way back when for some people some it's more mm -hmm. immediate but it's lifelong and yeah. we need and to keep promises and we're going to be looking at those promises mm -hmm. as we go and pastor kate today talked about versions like version one two i feel like i'm only version 22 or something <laughs> at my age <laughs> but you do you keep you keep tweaking it yeah. you know you know yeah, making it a little bit better. <laughs> so anything else that struck you or I mean how fortuitous when we when Daddy and I planned this, we wanted to start with baptism and as our kickoff for the living faith. <laughs> As Johnny always says, it's the Holy Spirit. 
If I found recall, I'm meant to be ready for this. <laughs> the sign of the cross thing. Yes. You know, like I know that Luther said at the beginning of the day, start, you know, it's mm -hmm. sort of a reminder. Um, Virginia here was asking me what, why this way, you know, why up, down, and then, you know, left, left right. right. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it makes the sign of the cross. I would not use that which way to start the story. Okay. Okay. Usually it's left to and right. Left. And I think it's because but people, most people, Right. My head. <laughs> 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 the Catholic Church was uh, the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Right. 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 I think they might. Which church? Right. 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 But the Orthodox Church, I think, oh, doesn't have yeah. 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 so, so it's you know, the, the main idea is that we have been joined to Christ's death and resurrection through baptism and in the yeah. yeah. It's a reminder. And it's and this is a reminder of our baptism. It's a reminder of who we are, who we belong to. Yeah. yeah. I feel like each time I do it. It's God putting a stain in me. Mm -hmm. I am here. Yeah. You know, you are mine. Yeah. You are mine. Yeah. And I know some people, Lutherans, feel we're too high church to do that. Yeah. I think that is so basic. Well, and, and that's, that has come from, you know, at the Reformation, there were a lot of things that were done just to really say, we're Lutheran. You're Catholic. Well, we're Protestant. You're Catholic. And um, that was done on both sides. Yeah. And Luther was really adamant that no, we need to have baptism, we need to have communion. He felt he really pushed confession and forgiveness. He also, you know, he things like the sign of the cross. He said, you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, right, right? You know, that was, these that are things intention. that are meaningful. Yeah. It reminds us of who we are and who we are. It reminds us of our baptism. It reminds us of what God has done for us. So, so it's. I mean, when I grew up in the Lutheran Church, we never made the sign of the cross. Yeah, I mean, no, I never, to pass the yeah, to, right. to bless yeah, exactly. like We never made the exactly sign. Mm -hmm. going to the Catholic Church with my husband. I made the sign of the cross all the time, and then coming here was like, oh, oh this is nice. We do it again. I love that he says starting the day of that. That's beautiful. Yeah, I had not done that. I'm going to start doing it. It's interesting because I was raised Presbyterian and we did not do that. Mm -hmm. And I've been to a lot of Presbyterian churches and you don't do it. And I think that's because initially with the Reformation, there were a lot of things that were considered too Catholic. You mm -hmm. didn't want to associate mm -hmm. with those Catholics. Mm -hmm. That's why and, I don't do that. And, and so, um, and, and, some, and people aren't always comfortable doing it. So that's okay. You have other ways of reminding yourself of yeah. who you are and who's, who you are. Who God is, yeah. Okay. So, it's you know, it, it's it's just interesting how, you know, Luther really was not looking to separate from the church, but there were things that he just felt were not right yeah. and, and needed changing. And some of those things he wanted changed, the Catholic Church eventually changed, which is <laughs> interesting. Other things not, but anyway, we won't get into the Reformation right now. <laughs> <laughs> So, anything else? I mean, I loved um, last week when Pastor Keith came in. He mentioned we were happened to be looking at the slide with one of the prayers of, of the font, mm -hmm. and he said, "Oh, there are lots of different ones." And sure enough, mm -hmm. I mean, the one he used last week at, um, at the ten thirty service, which just I mean, it just hit hard on the water images, but from the Hebrew scriptures and the, and the New Testament, and just um, it just went. It was really amazing. And so he sent me a list of like six different ones. If you want, I'd be happy to, to share them with you. I'd love um, to see them. Yes. Um, and you can copy them or I'll just email them to you. But, um, or I'll, I'll bring them next week. I'll, I'll make some copies and have them next week. So. But it, it's, it is, it's, they're beautiful. So with, we're, we look at certain things here, but there are lots of variations. I have to admit, as a cradle Lutheran, a Lutheran pastor's wife, 
it had only been in developing this study and talking with Paul Hoffman that I realized about the dying and the rising, the dying and the rising, you know, all these years. Yeah. Well, because I was one of those people who gave very little thought to my baptism, which is how this was when I got here. Say, I don't think the average person sitting in the pew thinks about baptism like we think yeah. about the Eucharist, Holy Communion, you know. Mm -hmm. But so that really now is so imprinted on you, you know, rising and the dying. Yeah. Yeah. And um, for myself, too, uh, when I think of rising and dying, I've often talked to, thought about my Good Fridays and Easter's throughout my life, you know, where you're going through a really tough time and it's like Good Friday, not dying. And then you have, you get through that and, you know, and, and that middle time is Holy Saturday. And then Easter, you have the resurrection. Well, I've always kept it in that little area of, you know, the true, the one that's just Friday, Easter. And, you know, this is like, oh, okay. It's and it says <laughs> over and over in our scriptures that we have, you know, that we rose, we are joined to Christ's death and resurrection right here in baptism. So it is, it is beautiful. It is. It's, it's nice. Yeah. I'm listening and like Emily saying, starting the day with the sign of the cross and now what you just said about even little things in your, little things in your life that are big things. Yeah. It, it puts your baptism into practice, yeah. your everyday life. Exactly. Like not just, oh, it's my baptism, you know, or right. oh, I'm getting confirmed. It's it's how does it connect yeah. every day? How do we live our faith through it? That's mm -hmm. living faith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The name. Right, right. <laughs> Why? Why are we people right now? <laughs> so um, last week I had asked everybody to just jot down one word. Oh. Um, I love the response to <laughs> baptism. And these are the words that people volunteered last week. And I just thought it was a wonderful variety. And really, it reflects the depth and the breadth of what baptism is and how we experience it. Uh, Jesus commanded us to go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have been joined to Jesus' death and resurrection adopted as children of God, regenerated and renewed through the Holy Spirit. We've been saved from the powers of evil, cleansed of sin, and given new life and faith. And water is the quintessential embodiment of all that God has done for us. God has taken us from death and brought us into new life. So I just thought it was interesting how you know these words connected with the different aspects of that just mm -hmm. That's pretty yeah. 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 So, um, that's good. Um, so we've explored the sacrament of baptism, and we keep saying it's not just the one day event. It should be lived out through our life. It's a beginning. Um, so how now we're called to continue to grow in love and faith and to serve the world every day. I really enjoyed, um, the ELCA has a resource called Living Our Baptism, and it's designed to help keep our baptism front and center in our lives. And they suggest that the essence of our new life is in relationship with others. It's, they say, our baptism sets us out on a lifelong journey that is characterized by our relationship to God, our relationship to our faith community, our relationships with various parts of our neighborhood and community, and our relationship to the wider world. So how do we nurture and sustain these relationships? It's by living out the promises that we made at baptism and affirmed at confirmation. So this is what everybody was talking about, those responsibilities, the promises we made. So that's what we're gonna look at today. If you want, either you can look at the slide or you can turn to page 228 in the ELW. Uh, these are the responsibilities that we entrust parents when they bring their children to baptism. And the parents are asked, as you bring your children to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, Bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture them in faith and prayer so that your children may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. And we, as sponsors and congregants, 
are asked to support the parents in this endeavor. And then, as you all are talking about, on confirmation or at different times in our lives as adults, we have an affirmation of baptism. And this is where we are asked, do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And our response is we do, and we ask God to thank God. So these are the promises and the responsibilities that we have and that we are, um, we affirm in, in our affirmation that we promise as you know parents and sponsors and as parents to help people live it out. And I really like this affirmation because we talk about this affirmation of baptism as a covenant that God made with us. And a covenant covenant is an agreement between two parties. There's responsibility on both sides. And there are two aspects of, of baptism. There's gift and responsibility. And we often like to focus on the grace and salvation of baptism. Yes. This part. <laughs> and we sometimes forget the responsibility part or the promises or our side of this covenant. Um, and that's what we've affirmed here. These are our side or our part of the covenant. And the ELCA has called these promises the five gifts of discipleship. And just like in they, they suggest that if we unwrap or utilize these gifts and responsibilities, we will be able to nurture and sustain our relationship with God, with our faith community, with the larger community around us, and in the global community. And in so doing, we will be able to live into the new life given to us in baptism. So these responsibilities can also be seen as gifts, ways of living out a baptismal life. So I thought we could take some time today to start unwrapping some of these gifts. I don't think we will get through all five, but <laughs> it's okay. So we will start with the very first gift. To live among God's faithful people. Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians that, for just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews are free, slaves are free, and we were all made to drink in one spirit. So that last week when we were talking about what is baptism and what happened, one of the things is that we become we become part of the body of Christ. We are all into the body of Christ. So I'd like somebody to read what is one aspect. This is um what is one aspect of living among God's faithful people? Here's a little reflection. Did somebody read that? Starting at the top? Yeah, in baptism. Mm -hmm. um, in baptism, we become part of the church, the body of Christ, the faithful people of God. Each of us is an essential part of the body of Christ. This community is a place where we can both learn about God at work in our world and practice our faith. It is impossible to find a perfect church. Instead, every church is made up of sinners. Living among God's faithful people is not easy. In part, people are not always faithful to God nor kind to each other. Left to ourselves, we tend to think of ourselves first and foremost. Nevertheless, it is among God's faithful people that we can learn from other Christians what it means to walk by faith. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so what strikes you? Is there anything in this that you know, resonates with you or gives you pause or, you know, like, wait, wait a minute. What what strikes you in this? Living among God's faithful people is not easy. <laughs> yeah. It takes work. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it also gives strength or role modeling. Um, because you turn to one another or you 
watch one another and and how you lead your lives and you think i want to do that i want to be like that mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I think I I uh, I think of what we did during the tornado and the response to the tornado, mm -hmm. and I think that it was just so from the bottom up. It just came, you know, to be like, how did it happen? It was just wonderful mm -hmm. heart of a couple of people who just jumped in, saw the need, and did something. And so I think, you know, a prime example of how God works mm -hmm. through people. And mm -hmm. that's a great example of then wish well, she did that or they did that. Maybe I can help out. You know, mm -hmm. maybe I can't take control of it or God or, or be the head person, but I can help them. And yeah, need you to do more. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're absolutely right, Emily, because um it was spontaneous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in order for that spontaneity to happen. They had to be a basis that was built over time, almost unknowingly, by by being part of a community. You know, part of my part of my work has been in crisis management, and I learned a long time ago that um, there's a, a a cliche that um, you know crisis builds character, and I said no, that's not true. Crisis reveals character. The character is built before the crisis and just like the tornado or other other events in life you know you've been you're in prep we don't know it but we're in preparation all the time we don't know when the when the when the hammer's gonna drop and when it does we don't know what to do because we've been doing what we've been doing that's the value of it you don't even see it until all of a sudden you need it you know, and and that's usually at the crisis points in your life. You yeah. come through. Others come through for you. It's just there, and that's the mirror. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that. That when I can't, you can. Yeah. That, I think that's serious. What stuck out to me personally, building on what you're saying, is the word kind, mm -hmm. because I I hear it a lot in the news now with Ukraine and with all the stuff that's going on in our world people you know we need more kindness to each other and i personally being a part of this church now have felt the this is why i joined this church because of the kindness Aww. and the the people that just everyone reached out to me which I've never had that happen to me before. So that <laughs> that is um, something that that word sticks You're out. very yeah. deserving of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sometimes. <laughs> All times. All times. Just something like, like um, say, chosen 300 or mm -hmm. doing the mattresses or making the food. I've had so many people giving back, and, and you don't realize those people little things mean so much to so many people you know and it's it's, it's community too because you're meeting all different types of people mm -hmm. uh chosen three i'm picking chosen 300 because i like i go to that so uh mm -hmm. but i also like the idea of of making the food and 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 just i can't think of all the things that everything goes on in this church there's just so many things mm -hmm. that you're not only are you helping people and helping yourself you're reaching out and sharing it with other people and sharing how you feel about it and yeah. And they're sharing it back with you. And the people that you're giving to are sharing it back with you too. So it's just a whole sense of community. Just even the little things. Yeah. Giving somebody a dollar, you know? I was one person saying to me years ago here that, you know, when something really smells so good, but you don't realize what it goes into taking that, that's what this church is like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it smells good. So many things were going into that. I mean, she, she was yeah. using it, which I, I said to her, I'm stealing that. Which, uh, but that's, that's so true that we each play our little part, not even thinking to the greater good, the mixture. Mm -hmm. but, but how it unfolds, how it blossoms is just. Breath change. It is just yeah, breath. and that's the beauty of it. Is you're not you're not really thinking about it in the, in the sense of an expectation. It just 
happens. You know, like doing chosen grief or all hat. You know, you you don't go into it looking for what you're going to get out of it. But at the end of the day, you realize you got something out of that. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I don't mean that you know the warm and fuzzy good feeling. The fact that you actually did something. You actually got your hands dirty. You actually you got beyond talking about it, but doing something. And it's just a little bit, but it's enough. It's called purpose. Yeah, exactly. To have purpose. Well said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with often, purpose. So often when when somebody performs at a heroic deed, you know, like rescuing somebody from danger somehow, they will say, I just it just came naturally. Yeah, mm -hmm. it automatically. Yeah. Yeah. automatically. And so you kind of think, somewhere along the line, they had to have learned. Yeah. yeah. Had to be, yeah. become part of their psyche. Yeah. Yeah. Part of yeah. who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty on the yeah. Their yeah. response mechanism. Yeah. I guess we can say that's God. Yeah. So these are all the gifts of being in community. What are some of the challenges of being in community? I'm sorry. <laughs> you, don't have, you don't have enough time. It's, it's great. Because I do want to hear. Community doesn't always agree on things. Okay, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, community can have people, and understandably, because we're human to be myopic and just looking at life this way or the church this way because of your own experience. Mm -hmm. So the challenge then for the church is to break down those barriers, broaden the vision perspective mm -hmm. that we are all in this together. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So therein lies the challenge. And for all of us, not just designated leaders, but every single one of us, mm -hmm. as we deal with one another, to look through the lens of kindness and love mm -hmm. and say, okay, to try to see where this person is coming from. But it's a challenge because we're human. Mm -hmm. We're human, you know, and we all and, fall prey to that. And the old saying, we never did it that way. It's <laughs> 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 a challenge to overcome and that is seven last words for the church. <laughs> <laughs> Like change, yeah. and change is hard, and not everybody agreed that change is good. You know, you're being pulled out of your comfort. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but you're talking about doing it, the changing of the service times. I mean, yeah. you said there's always somebody's going to get it. Um, you know, don't look for the perfect solution; it doesn't exist. And I love what you said about that's the difference between a compromise. If somebody gets. Yeah. If some people get. If somebody's happy after a bargain. That wasn't a compromise. Compromise, right? yeah. compromise is everybody's a little ticked off. You know? <laughs> and that's okay. That's the second part. It's okay. You know, we'll, we'll survive. Let's move on. And, you know, the myopic part, you know, just too many Christmas with all the stuff yeah. we've got to do in this world. Mm -hmm. You're going to get hung up on this. Yeah. yeah there right. was a book written about it focused on the debate of, to where to put the uh, piano. Oh, in this okay. in oh, this room, I oh, can't have oh, been. and oh. it was symbolic of. I mean, having lived and loved the with and loved the pastor, I would get all these. Oh, yeah. But it, but again, it's just who we are. You're just who we are. That that's one of the things I like about this reflection on yeah. living with yeah. God's faithful people, because it says it's where we learn about God at work in our world and practice our faith. And to me, hopefully, ideally, we will make our churches, our, especially our little congregation, a safe place to practice yeah. because we're going to fail. We're going to try and we're going to fall on our bones, you know, mm -hmm. and so it would be good and we need a safe place to, um, to talk about different things and different issues. Um, so community is essential and I'm going to just wrap this up when, um, because I see the time, it's almost fine, mm -hmm. but um, I thought this this particular gift was really important because community is essential. Um, it's in community that we actually are fully formed in our faith because without others, it's purely me and God. And it's very easy to become, to form a very self-centered faith. Mm -hmm. And community can sustain and challenge us to live as God really is calling us to live. And I think it's in community that each person 
is recognized as an essential part of the body of Christ. Yes. All people are part of the body of Christ, no matter who they are, their orientation, their race, their politics, their education, their abilities. We need to recognize and welcome um, the various gifts that each and every member brings to the um, community, help them to develop them and unfold their gifts, not only for the little community, but to encourage them to use those at home and at work and in the greater um, community at large. Um, we learn about God and practice. And some of that is, as the parents um, promised, you know, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, to teach them, you know, the, what do we do in church and to learn those rights and rituals. But we are more formed by the attitudes, the actions, the words, and the deeds that happen in the church and in the community than we are, I think, than by learning. Um, it's what we do. It's uh, coming together, doing the um, different <clears throat> ministries and things like that. Um, and the community can act as a mirror for us. Are we living a life that reflects mm, our good. values as Christians, or do we need a little correction um, and a little more practice? A little more tweaking. Um, mm -hmm. And the community itself needs to be able to look at itself and mm -hmm. see where it needs to change or, or move mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, the community is, you know, we're saints and sinners. Um, but we learn how to walk by faith from one another. We see how somebody endures the death of a spouse or an illness of, of their own. And it gives us hope and gives us a way of living. And we see how people are reaching out in the tornado or doing other types of work. And it gives us um, the inspiration to follow them. Um, one of the things that I thought was really interesting are strategic plan forward in faith, the very first three key areas that we want to address are for community. It's mm -hmm. to widen our welcome for more inclusive church, help develop leadership and identify talents, enrich the faith formation and support families. Um, and then these next generation ministries and our stewardship and culture of generosity, right? it's all part of formation, both helping to build up the body of Christ, but also to form one in all of us. Um, so unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to get to go further, but in the oh, next two please. weeks, yeah. um, the next two weeks, Paul Hoffman, who is a pastor from Seattle, Washington, and has written two books, Lutheran. Um, he's Lutheran, um, has, he wrote a book called Faith Forming Faith. And in one, of, this is a, story of some of his people that there are living out their baptismal faith in new ways and what he found was both the older members that they started to do a new way of preparing people for baptism and Anyway, um, they found that both the new, the members who were working to join the church were learning, uh, were learning both from the other members. Here, I have one. That's our future. No, no, no. It's covered. It's good. It's one page. It's one page. Yeah. It's, it's a one piece of paper, two pages, it's a tiny print because I'm saving trees. But anyway, I just hope that we can, um, next week we will, I think you will really enjoy being with um, Pastor Hoffman. Uh, he is, he's, he's at a really safe as. What my new dear is to do. Um, I'd like to. Uh, there's, so yeah. you want us to read this before? We so can, read yeah, this yeah. before okay. you come next week if you yeah. have time, okay. um, because it really exemplifies the importance of community and how we are formed by one another. Yeah. And then, if you want to continue exploring some of these other um, five gifts of discipleship, I have um, a very abbreviated version here. And I will put up on, when Emily is back, we will have links online to um, the ELCA site because there's some really nice reflections on this. So before you go, and I know it's time for church. church. Yes, I got to those. Maybe we could just say this. Sal, do you want this? That's the second one, Sal. Um, maybe, um, did everybody on that forget? Yes. Yeah.
There's some extra. Okay, great. Yeah. Can we just say this prayer together? I think it just reminds us of what happens and what is going on with our baptism. So if you do the bold, mm -hmm. claimed by God's grace for the sake of the world, we are a new creation through God's living word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Gathered by God's grace for the sake of the world, we will live among God's faithful people, hidden in the word of God, and share in the Lord's suffering. Sent by God's grace for the sake of the world, we will Yes, definitely. Yes. And Nikki's coming in the last week of September. Oh, my God, she'll do Bible studies that. Okay. Okay. 